All right, this is just a, a quick video. Um, before I actually uh, got into uh, 3D printing, you can see my little Ender 3 right there, uh, I uh, tended to use uh, found items. Um, and in this particular case, this is a uh, nose trimmer. Um, it had kind of a new, uh, unique little base here I thought could be useful. Um, the trimmer itself um, basically uh, has the bottom end in here, opens. Uh, you uh, put the battery in here. It's, uh, I think, a double A that goes in there. And that would run the little motor that's in here. We'll take this off here. And the business end is, of course, the trimmer. Uh, we have a, a metal uh, part that's considered part of the uh, cutting edge. Uh, the blade rotates around in there. And then, uh, of course, the cutting edge. Um, this also, uh, let me spin it here. This actually comes off yeah, like that. Okay, and uh, so there you go. So basically, uh, as you see it, uh, this is it. There's no moving parts, nothing, you know, moves in and out. Um, I looked at the body and says, well, you know, I, I think I could actually make something out of this. And what I did is I kept part of this and modified um, the upper head to do uh, what I wanted it to do. And to show you that, let's go ahead and move this aside just a little bit here and bring into view the prop. So as you can see uh, right here is I am using the uh, the original body, the stand itself right here. This is uh, a brushed aluminum here and here this is a little ring, uh, upper and lower ring around the, uh, the lower body here and to give it some sense that it is actually, actually actually functional uh, you can see a little light there um, the tube here is actually acrylic it's an acrylic tube that's been machined with little grooves in it little slots right here and then on the outer uh, slots is uh, aluminum or actually shiny uh, chrome tape uh, again to add to the look a little bit here you can kind of see that that has a little shiny aspect to it the uh, the cutter let's go ahead and, and focus on that a little bit uh, comes out of the case like that I'll set this aside and it is a bit different um, you, it looks similar on the outside but I've added uh, parts here I've changed the on off switch that was located here um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and remove the upper top here uh, as you can see this still essentially has the cutting edge the metal edge which is kinda cool I did add an acrylic rod right there uh, this is brushed aluminum right here, the metal part here with painted uh, black, uh, as you can see there. I still used part of the, uh, of the uh, cutting edge. You know, I cut off the bottom here, so you can see that it still uses the cutting edge. Uh, I did add this aluminum rings. These are aluminum rings around there to uh, spice up the look a little bit. And, of course, the rod in the middle. Um, so that, that was still used. This is an aluminum ring around here that holds the entire piece in place. There's some uh, little bitty uh, Allen head uh, uh, screws right here, uh, right there. They're little set screws that hold that in place. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how this functions. Back here is an actual switch. This is well, more of a lever. And what I do is I can pop that open like that. It is spring loaded. So let's try that again. You close this up. You press the two, the back and the front here at the same time, and that actually pops open, which reveals a switch right here. There's actually a little switch there. And so when I uh, actually press this up against a, a body or a sample, this press the button here, Oop, let me like that, and it actually pulls a sample. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and put that back start again. Okay, press here and we're going to take a sample. Now to inject the sample you actually just turn this one quarter turn and then you press that up against there and let's do that again and it re re injects. So you turn it one way like this and it takes a sample. You turn it back a quarter turn and it releases. So you don't necessarily have to have it pushed up against anything but it gives the impression that it's pulling a sample. So I'll show you here. We turn this this way we hit the button, it pulls, release, and it goes back in. So, like that. Now, to show where 
the power supply is, this portion here actually is held on right there by a magnet. So basically, that just pops into place and that closes like that. We hit the button here, that pops open like that. So this portion back here it was, was added by me. Uh, again, as I showed earlier, there's no moving parts in the back area as it came. So uh, this part here, it was essentially all modified. So I would, looking at this, all of this is gone. Uh, I needed it to be hollow enough to accept the, uh, the battery portion here when it closes. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that that actually locks into place like that. You hit the button and that pops open just like that. So you go like that. The case goes back on there. Boom, like that. You can take the case off here like that. Pop that open like that. And it reveals the battery. So you can change out the battery and do whatever's needed. It's a small little 12 volt battery. So we're going to go ahead and put that back in like this. That actually pops on there magnetically. It just stays there. So we hit the button. Boom, like that. We turn this here so that it actually will pull an injection here, like this, like that. You turn this like that, quarter turn or so, and it uh, injects. All right, so that's uh, that's my little, uh, I guess, hypo. <laughs> uh, but basically, it's kind of more than that. You put it back in the stand there, put the cover back on, and uh, there it is. So, thanks for looking. Uh, it was kind of one of those things I did some time ago, and uh, it still works. Okay.